essential atoms in your body, every one of them was synthesized in the stars, right? And all the atoms that make up the Earth and all their properties were synthesized in the stars. So all the properties of the Earth, the crustal rocks of the Earth, was all open, and it came out of a supernova explosion. A time when one star burned for a few days brighter than the whole of our galaxy, right? That's how life is released from the stars, right? That's how, it, that's how it gets to you and me and not the solar system, you see. But, I mean, I, I really only mention this because of the beauty of the thing, you see. So, But what's your background? I'm curious. What, oh, what, where, I'm, where have you I, come from? Who I'm, are you? I'm where a are you? I'm a medic, for a where, start. Where do you live? Oh, in... Well, I've just retired from full academic life, actually. I'm in New Zealand at the moment. Um, oh, wow. But I've got a house in Perth in Australia, so I sort of commute a bit. <laughs> when it gets cold in New Zealand, I go to Perth. <laughs> no, no, I'm a medic. I... Um, and I did a PhD in Kings, you know, just after the discovery of the double helix and everything. And then I've been in intensive care medicine. But for the last 20 years, I've been working in human genetics, like looking for genes responsible for human disease. And this is an academic interest, you know, I've always had, though. And I wrote a book, you see, Nature's Destiny, wow. which was an update. Of Henderson was the professor of phys philosophical, physiological chemistry at Harvard, right? Okay. And when I was in intensive care medicine in Sydney, I came across some of the phenomena that led him to write this book, right? The strange, the strange fitness of oxidative metabolism. All our energy comes from oxidation, right? Oxidation, as the professor of chemistry at Harvard says, is the reaction that empowers the world, right? It's true. And basically, yeah, it's in technology and human life. We're, we live by combustion, right? Exactly. Of reduced carbons. But basically, in fact, uh, when you look at the proper... I was working in intensive care in Sydney, and basically, you know, when you're doing that work, you realize that, in fact, oxygen has properties, carbon dioxide has properties, water has properties, right? And it all fits together to make possible oxidative metabolism in a being like yourself. For instance, when you lose heat at 38 degrees, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to lose it by evaporative cooling of water, right, you see? If you, go into, if you go into a desert at 40 degrees or 43 degrees, you can't radiate the heat out of the body, right? Mm. And unless you have evaporative cooling, and water happens to have the greatest evaporative cooling effect of any fluid known, right? <laughs> That's how you live in the desert, you see. And I, when I was doing intensive care medicine, I realized what Henderson realized, because he says this himself, because he, he made massive discoveries in respiratory physiology at, at the beginning of the 20th century, right? Every medic knows his formula, the Henderson Hasselbach, which determines the, P, the relationship mm -hmm. between the pH of blood and acid base and things like that. And I came to realize that there was a strange fitness in all this for life like ourselves. And then when I went, to, I went to the Human Gene Mapping Conference in 87 in Paris, and a, a, a guy who was in fact a member of the French Academy told me, well, Mike, why don't you read this book by, by Henderson? He, he also had some of your ideas as well, you see. So basically, um, I read Henderson, and then, then 10 years after I read Henderson, I decided to try and update it. You get it? You <laughs> see? So, and I, I updated it. But you know, this is a classic. This is a real classic. Um, updates are never the equal the classic, right? Mm -hmm. This is the first statement. It's like Newton's Principia. Nobody can ever write, even Einstein, you can't do Newton's Principia again because he found the science. And the modern world is to a large extent. You talk about the pen being mightier than the sword. The modern world is largely the outcome of Principia, that the world runs according to natural laws, and we can discover them, work them out, and can be empowered by this knowledge, right? That was science, right? Changed the whole world. So, you know, nobody can equal Principia. And this is a, this is a great classic as well. It's very, very seldom read. But I mean, as I say, I came across phenomena when I was working in my own professional field in intense. Literally care. experienced the yeah, phenomena. Yeah, literally experienced it. You know, you, you realize that, in fact, for instance, a thing that tremendously struck Henderson uh, when he was researching in Harvard was that when oxygen combines with reduced reduced um, carbon, that's CH, right? I mean, you know, reduced carbon, mm -hmm. which is wood's reduced carbon as well. The end product is CO2 and water. Water's the matrix of life. And CO2 has amazing properties, which make it so fit for so many reasons. When it combines with water, it gives you the bicarbonate buffer, which is the major buffering system against acidity in the body, you see. So you see this, the way it all, it all, everything seems to fit together. You'd think that, in fact, the world had been arranged for for um, oxidation in organisms like ourselves, you think. 